All right, well, welcome to module two. Um, and we're going to start the semester off and start the course off actually with talking about uh, things that we can do outside the classroom to uh, better your success in, in biology. Um, and the reason I do so is I spend the first couple weeks doing that so that uh, if you are taking other courses, you can get the courses under your belt and kind of get the semester started uh, without me uh, going too much into you know, course content type things. So today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, what I call at UWF opportunities beyond the classroom. So in the biology department, um, we actually have one of the largest number of student organizations um, on campus. And so there's lots of opportunities for our students to get involved in the organizations and to um, get experience in their field of interest. And so you might think, well, I don't really, I'm not interested in that and I don't really want to, but I hope what I want to get across to you from this module is first why you should be interested in thinking about getting involved in these organizations and then second, I want to give you kind of a survey and overview of all the different organizations we have on campus here for you. Um, they're going to be biology specific, so we're not going to go into like every single student org. Um, and then the other thing I want to show you is that these are all student-led organizations, so you have an opportunity to develop whatever you're interested in um, and give you some contact information. Now, in the face-to-face -face class that we do throughout the uh, academic year in the fall and spring semesters, I typically invite all of the presidents to come in and present their organization to the class, and this is a much better way of presenting it. Unfortunately, because we're online, I can't do that. So. Um, please be aware, bear with me that I'm going to have to present all the orgs for you. And some of this data may be changing because when a new year starts, starting this fall, a lot of these student organizations have new members and cabinet members. So some of the information may be out of date, but I'm going to show you where you can find the most up-to-date information. Okay, so let's get started with thinking about, or me telling you about why it is important to do some of these organizations. So one thing that you have to understand about STEM and especially biology is many employers and professional uh, schools really want you to have hands-on experience in your field of interest. And so taking courses is great and doing well in those courses is expected of course, but they also want you to gain uh, experiences in your field of interest. Many professional schools are going to require that you get volunteer and work experience and for example PA schools want you to have um, clinical experience and so on. Um, many uh, jobs and other uh, organizations like pre, uh, med schools and dental schools um, also require that you have or, or don't require but heavily value things like leadership and mentoring opportunities and lastly it's what separates you from everyone else. So you all are going to graduate with a degree in biology and many of you are going to have very similar GPAs. Um, and so the question is when I'm looking at a candidate that maybe I want to hire uh, for a particular job, what makes one different than the other? So, so what are things that that candidate did that may, really separates them from everyone else? And getting all of these things is what's going to separate you from everyone else because if you don't have these, other people do. And so you will be passed up for jobs and other opportunities because lots of people are getting experiences in their field of interest while they're in college. And so I'm going to encourage you to do so because this is one of the few opportunities um, on campus at UWF that you're going to have to really get these experiences. So let me show you an example of uh, an internship ad from the Gulf Area Marine Adventure Park, which is um, over in uh, Fort Walton Beach area. And this is just a very common internship ad that's for the summer, typically um, they're looking for summer positions or other season dates. And what I want to highlight to you is under the ad, there's a bunch of requirements, things like you must have completed at least two years of undergraduate schooling, um, ability to lift 50 pounds, and so on. But what I want to highlight are these two. Two requirements are excellent teamwork skills and good public speaking skills. And the question is, Getting your degree here and being a biology student and doing well in your courses, how does that say that you have good teamwork skills and good public speaking skills? And the answer is that, that it doesn't. So in order to be competitive for these type of jobs and internships that want these skills, you have to gain them in extracurricular activities. 
And so be aware that many uh, job ads are going to require things like this. And the more activities you're part of, all right, the more um, kind of arguments you're going to have and demonstrations you're going to have that you have these requirements that, these, that, that they want. And lastly, for example, you can see here they require scuba certification. So, and we also have a scuba club on campus as well. So um, there are lots of things here like this that you're going to have to be aware of and you're going to need to gain these skills while you're here. But it's not just for a marine experience. So for example, here is a, um, a survey of kind of the uh, highest important ratings for medical schools. And so you can see here that academics is one of their most important things they look at. So they want you to have a high GPA and a good MCAT score and so on. But right in this category, they have a whole other category of experiences. And they highly rank things like healthcare experience and community service and volunteer experience. And you can see experience with underserved populations, leadership experience. All of those things are very high ranking for health professional schools, not just med schools, but every school. And so taking your courses and doing well in the MCAT over here will help with your academic metrics. All right? But if you don't have any of these experiences, all the other candidates do have those and, and you may not get into the school that you're interested in just because of the fact that you, don't, you haven't gained any of these experiences. So it's important to get those while you're in school. This is an example of a, an application for a student of ours um, who is applying to dental school. So this is a dental application. And when you apply to health professional schools, there are lots of boxes that you have to fill in and you have to basically state all of your experiences that you've done throughout school. So for example, this student was part of the Pre-Dental Society, the American Society of Microbiology, they were part of Rho Kappa, and you have to explain a description of these activities and you have to log how many hours and what were the dates. So when you do apply to these health professional schools, if you have nothing to put into these boxes, you're going to have a very blank application and it just is not as impressive as a student who does have lots of these experiences. And so uh, it's important to gain them so that you'll be competitive for those schools. Lastly, one extreme reason why it's important and one thing that I want you to think about throughout all of BioSkills this semester is, called, is networking. So being part of these student organizations is your first step into networking with fellow biology majors. And the reason that's important is many of these biology majors are going to all get jobs in similar fields than you, especially if you're part of a, a health professional society and you're all going to go to med school or dental school or vet school. Um, and that'll be important because this is your first network and you never know when uh, a former colleague or student of yours, you know, who is at the same um, university as you, that you're going to meet them again at a conference or you might run into them and work with them or need their help with something. And so networking is extremely key um, in, in the sciences, especially in biology. And so being part of these organizations is your first step um, into networking. And you never want to lose track of that network. Okay, so those last few slides, I really wanted to emphasize to you that it is important to get started. And so maybe I have motivated you a little bit to get started. The question is, when should you start? Well, I always say start as soon as possible and with the caveat as long as you can balance your coursework with extracurricular activities. If, if you're uh, you know, getting C's and you're not doing really well in your courses and you just do not have the time to even handle your courses yet, I really wouldn't recommend jumping into a bunch of student organizations. But if your course is under your belt and you're doing pretty well and you, you have some extra time, then definitely start getting started um, in these organizations and do it as soon as possible. And in fact, because we're in the summertime, Many of these organizations are, are not active, but starting this fall, when everyone comes back to school, the organizations start back up, and it's a perfect time to, to get involved. So where do you go to find more information on student organizations? Well, we have a wonderful site now called Argo Pulse. Um, if anyone is here prior, they probably knew the old Argo Pulse, which was kind of a really messy site, but now um, it has gotten uh, really well organized and designed. And so the website, uh, you can see it here, is part of the UWF's uh, whole website. So if you just search at my UWF for Argo Pulse, you'll find it, or you can go to this link down here. So I want to take you to Argo Pulse and just walk you around the website in a second. Okay, so here's Argo Pulse, um, and you can see the homepage has a bunch of uh, just basically um, announcements on the main page. 
things about elections and SGA and so on. So this is kind of your, if you really want to keep track of what's going on on campus, this is a really great site to bookmark and check on a weekly basis. Um, on the right are the upcoming events. These are events, Argo Pulse is part of the entire university, so it's not just biology specific. And then if you go up here to organizations, this is the entire list of all the registered organizations at UWF. And so be aware that there's lots of biology, but there's also just lots and lots of organizations. So <clears throat> if you're interested in marine, you can click on the M button here and find the Marine Ecology Research Society, which will take you to their homepage. And many homepages are kind of bland like this, where they're just a bunch, they're just the announcements of their um, different activities. You can check whether you're attending or not. You can find out where. And if you click on the profile, you can find their uh, websites and information and their con the advisor name, their president's name, and so on. As you see here, many of the organizations use Facebook pages, um, which is where they're, you find most of their activities on the Facebook page. All right, and then if you want to go back home to Argo Pulse, uh, you can just click on the main link up at the top and it will take you back home. So this is where you're going to go if you're interested in any organization and you want to find more information uh, is Argo Pulse. All right, and part of that is um, every fall and spring semesters, uh, the university usually hosts some kind of demonstration of all the student organizations as well. They're usually fun events where you can get a lot of free food and, and goodies and things like that. And so coming up this fall, uh, right when the semester starts, I think this is the weekend after the first week of classes, uh, we'll be hosting the Argo Palooza 2016, and this will be at the UWF Fieldhouse, and you can go and basically find every student organization there and get lots of information. It's a huge event. Um, so if you are interested, you do want to join, um, I would highly recommend you go to Argo Palooza um, and get some more information. Just introduce yourself. You're going to see these students anyways in your classes because we are a small university. Um, if you're a biology major, you will see many of the members of those student organizations. Um, so uh, don't be afraid to introduce yourself to them. All right, so let's start and kind of give you a good description of um, all the different organizations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a survey of the organization, kind of walk you through briefly. I'm not, I don't want to make this too long, but walk you through um, what their focus is and then how you can get in contact with them and what are some things that they do. So we'll start with the Marine Ecology Research Society, or also called MERS. And this is for any student interested um, in any branch of marine and ecology. And in fact, you don't have to be interested in marine and ecology. You can join this organization it's just for any people who are interested in science. Um, so they do mostly marine and ecology specific activities. Um, they, they focus a lot on making you, giving you opportunities for volunteer research, networking, travel. They do a lot of activities that will get you these experiences um, that, that you're going to need for those internships and those jobs. So some of their past events you see in pictures here are things like a marine themed costume party, but they, they volunteer and raise money for charities. Um, they do camping and snorkeling events. Uh, they take aquarium trips where they get to go to see behind the scenes of the aquariums and things like that. And one thing that's really important is MERS actually raises money to provide um, research grants to the members. So you guys can, as a member, write a research grant if you're doing research in a lab and be awarded a grant. And that looks incredibly awesome on your um, resume or your CV that you actually were, received a financial grant to do some research. All right, some other things that they do is they, uh, they help take care of the marine facility. So if you have not seen it, um, kind of by the parking lots is a, our marine facility where a lot of the grad students and faculty do research. All right, but at the same time, there's a lot of these tanks that are um, meant just to be looked at and observed. Um, they have a thing up, they have a touch tank that they use for outreach events and things like that. And the MER students are the ones who are maintaining those tanks. So for example, if you're interested in getting a job in an aquarium, you can basically work for a year on maintaining the tank and then put on your resume or CV that you maintained a 50 gallon tank, which is impressive. All right, so you can get a lot of opportunities <clears throat> and they take a lot of trips and they have a lot of different volunteer activities. So their first meetings, um, because we're in the summertime now, um, they haven't made their schedules for the fall yet, but you're going to start hearing about all these organizations in, very, in early August. All right? You'll see lots of signs up on the windows and, and places like that. And if you are interested in MERS, um, their president is Katie Vaccaro, all right, and her email address is kmv12 at students, and uh, they also have a Facebook page. So you can 
uh, find out more information or contact them as summer gets or as fall gets closer about when they're meeting. Um, and you'll see a lot of the MERS uh, students around doing lots of activities. All right, if you're interested in plants, we have a botanical society. Um, and this isn't really a um, like research society. This is basically anybody who's interested in plants, gardening, um, anything botanical related. And so in reality, the, the society is made up of actually um, faculty, uh, graduate students, undergraduate students, community farmers and gardeners, um, staff, alumni, it's really anybody who's interested. So it's a very diverse group and really a nice way of meeting people in the community. And again, networking, all right, that's really important. If you're interested in getting a job in these fields, you can meet community gardeners and farmers and, and essentially start networking yourself. Um, so in Building 50AA, where many of your lectures are, you'll see behind it a very large greenhouse. One of their main things they do is they maintain that greenhouse. So they do lots of plant cultivations, um, growing, maintaining, and so on. So again, good experiences that you can put on a resume. Um, they basically uh, cultivate coffee and tea plants. They have lots of other plants as well that we use for research and for teaching labs and so on. Um, and so that, uh, that's great experience for anyone who maybe is interested in um, botany related subjects. Uh, in addition to that, the Botanical Society meets uh, weekly or you know, given their schedule and they have a faculty uh, present scientific paper discussions. Uh, typically they host this at a, a local restaurant or, or bar or something like that. So it's a very relaxed atmosphere uh, where you can sit and read uh, different papers and, and basically get to meet the faculty and talk to them about um, research in, in these fields. So here are some pictures. Obviously, um, you know, part of maintaining a greenhouse is cleaning it and making sure it's, it's uh, spick and span and also categorizing or cataloging and keeping track of all the plants that we have um, in the facility. Um, they uh, maintain a community garden. They do lots of plant sell sales. You'll find them outside of the building doing sales and they teach, they do a lot of education, so they teach you for uh, proper cutting and cult cultivation of the plants. Um, and you know, they're really focused on everything plants. So if, if you are interested, this is a wonderful society to join. Um, they uh, are looking to establish a butterfly garden on the 58A patio was one of their, their future goals. Um, and they are looking to uh, establish even more Florida native plants and really develop a nice garden area that they can use for education and for outreach. So if you're interested in those type of things, um, those still need to be developed and, and, and led. So um, any student who's interested, definitely get involved. It's, it's a great opportunity. So to become a member, um, you can contact Laura at LLB35 at students um, or go on Argo Pulse and find the Botanical Society. I believe their president has changed. So uh, they're, they're maybe looking for new presidents and new cabinet members. So this can also be your chance to get involved in a leadership role. Okay, and like I said, um, Many, all of these organizations are student-run, which means the students themselves have to have their own cabinet, president, vice president, treasurer, and so on, and they have to run everything themselves. And so there, every year, there's new students who are part of this cabinet. So remember that you have to have leadership ability. You know, many schools and, and jobs value leadership ability. Well, how do you get that? You get leadership avail ability by being presidents or vice presidents of these, or, you know, any cabinet member of these student organizations that demonstrate very clear leadership capability. All right, so next up we have the Pre-Dental Society. Uh, this is uh, run currently by Tara Tuma, although she's graduating, and there will be a new president, um, Hannah Kidd, sorry, HNK4, all right, <clears throat> um, who is now the president. So the uh, faculty advisor is Dr. Christina Behan. If you are a pre-dent, or interested in dental school, um, this is your advisor for career advice. So you might want to contact her anyways, and we'll talk about more about that later. Um, and like I said, the new president now is Mackenzie Kidd, who will be starting in the fall, and that's her contact information. So the Pre-Dental Society is obviously is for any student who's interested in uh, going to dental school. Um, and so what they do is they try to provide uh, appropriate opportunities for volunteer, for hands-on experience, uh, for a variety of things that will help you become successful at 
applying for dental school and getting into your school of interest. Um, so some things that they do is they do lots of volunteering. Uh, they do free dental days and they try and get people networked with uh, local dent uh, dentists so they can get hands-on experience and shadowing experience. Um, Pre-dental students, well, before you apply to dental school, you have to take the DAT, uh, basically the dental admissions test or aptitude test, however you know it. Um, this is a very difficult test typically. You can see it, it covers organic chemistry, biology, general chemistry, and so you have to study a lot for this. So the Pre-Dental Society will work on providing DAT preparation for you. Um, and then also they do a lot of trips to dental schools and dental events to get you networking and to get as much information to you as possible um, for you to, to be successful um, in, in dentistry. Some of the things that they do is they, um, and a lot of the organizations will do this, they'll invite guest speakers in. So, you know, admissions coordinators from the dental schools or so on. Um, they work on CV resume building workshops. Uh, they take trips to visit local dental schools, which is important. You can kind of get your name out there. Um, and they, they attend the annual meetings for the American Student Dental Association, so the ASDA. Um, this year it was at Disney, so that was a fun trip for them. But again, all of these things are getting you experiences, they're getting you information, and more importantly, they're giving you an opportunity to go introduce yourself to, to all the admissions coordinators, all of the people at the dental schools who um, you want them to know your name and know who you are, and, that, and it really helps. So you can tell this, this is from spring of 2016, this presentation, um, and some of the things that they were doing were tooth carving activities. They get a bar of soap and they work on tooth carving, um, which helps you with knowledge of the tooth uh, and so on. They do interview preparation workshops. So if you do go to dental school, you're gonna have to do uh, a lot of um, interviews and those are not easy. So practicing those are, are really important. Um, they talk about getting involved with research, and we'll talk about that next module about research at UWF, but that's also very important. And then they help you with education on dentistry. So when you do apply to dental school, many dental schools want to know how much do you know about dentistry. So things like terminology, procedures, current events, and so on. Okay, so it'll be important um, to, to know that, and the Dental Society will help you with that. And they also help you work on a personal statement. When you apply to the schools, you have to submit a personal statement and uh, they'll, they'll help you with that. So you can see everything's geared towards you pre-dental students applying to dental school. And so here's one of the teeth that they carved uh, out of a bar of soap, which looks really cool. And here are some pictures that are kind of old a little bit, but they still do this um, every year. Um, this is the pre-dental society that went to uh, University of Louisville School of Dentistry. And they also went and visited the uh, University of Florida College of Dentistry. And many of these students now are actually at these schools and dental school. By going there, they got to introduce themselves, they got to look around, meet all the people, uh, and become highly competitive for admission to those schools. Okay, and if you are interested in it, then again, contact Mackenzie Kidd and ask her if they're looking for um, a cabinet, any, any people for leadership opportunities if you're interested in that, or ask her when the meetings, if they know when the meetings are gonna be for the fall, but you'll hear about the PDS um, as well. Okay, next up we have the American Medical Women's Association of University of West Florida. This is called AMWA. And AMWA is essentially for any uh, person who's interested in medicine. It doesn't have to be pre-med, although many of them are pre-meds. It can be anyone who's interested in health-related careers. And their mission is to advance women in medicine. And um, many of these things are going to be very similar to all the other um, clubs that, that we talked about. So they do things like visit professional school, they bring in guest speakers, um, helping uh, girls gain interactive patient experience, so they do a lot of volunteer um, opportunities. They do a lot of community service, so they fundraise for the Health and Hope Clinic, which is our local free clinic at, in Pensacola, and volunteer at the Ronald McDonald House as well. And then they also, one of their other missions is advocacy, is talking about women in science and women in medicine, and so they tour and go to a lot of the local high schools and middle schools to try and um, speak about what AMWA is and recruit students who might not be sure that medicine's for them. So this is, uh, this is from the spring semester, of course, so these dates are not going to be applicable. They typically are going to be meeting uh, on Wednesdays, but that can change, of course, depending on people's schedules. 
Um, they do have dues, and the dues will cover the cost of things like shirts and some of the trips and things like that. And their dues are $15 per semester or $25 per year. Um, they take a variety of trips to different conferences as well, so they do a lot of, of fun, interactive events. And if you're interested in AMWA, they have their Facebook page at UWF AMWA. They're also on Argo Pulse. And Alicia Martin, who is this person right there, uh, ACM48 at students.uwf.edu. She is the president of AMWA. She founded it here on campus. And so if you are interested in getting involved with them, definitely contact her um, and get started this fall on joining AMWA. All right, moving on, we have the uh, American Society for Microbiology. And this is actually a nationally recognized student organization that is quite old as well. Um, and so this is for anybody who's really interested in science. Now, obviously, it's for microbiology, if you're interested in anything microbiology. Um, but in reality, this is kind of like a, a, a broad research-based student organization. This is an honor society as well, so there's going to be expectations for maintaining certain GPAs. Their current president is Kelsey Bing at KDB30, and so definitely contact her if you're interested. This, this student organization has been up and down. Um, we are actively looking for people who want to be presidents and vice presidents and, and treasurers of this organization. So if you want to get leadership uh, um, experience, definitely contact Kelsey and ask what they need because they, they definitely need a lot of help for ASM. So it's an honor society. It's been at UWF since 2007, so relatively new. Um, and like I said, it's, they require a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or above. And so being part of ASM also says that you have a, good, a competitive GPA. So again, it looks really good on resumes. Um, they have some requirements about attending certain meetings and volunteering for different events. And then again, there are dues of $25 per semester or $35 per year. And of course, with all these organizations, you get a t-shirt typically, so you can um, advertise your organization. And they do lots of activities, um, just lots of cool things. So they'll go visit local breweries. Um, they'll go to other microbiology-related industrial sites. Um, last year they went to the CDC and to Georgia Tech in Atlanta and they've also visited St. Jude's Research Hospital. So a lot of these things are trips that you can go out and kind of explore and see um, if those are careers that you're interested in. And you can also talk to people about how to get involved in those careers. How do you even get started? What, what, what do they recommend to make you competitive for those jobs? So again, these organizations are providing an opportunity for you to get involved, to find out how to best be successful at what you're doing. If you graduate without doing this, you're not going to have any avenues, any anywhere to go, anywhere, any network to talk to, and you have to start doing this on your own after you graduate, which is a little bit more difficult than while you're a student here. So here are some pictures of events they're doing. <clears throat> this is them at uh, Relay for Life, of course, and at St. Jude's Hospital, um, and just a good way of networking and getting to know different students um, and doing doing different things. Uh, next up is AMSA. This is the American Medical Student Association, and so this is a student organization for specifically pre-medical students, students, any students who are interested in going to medical school. And again, very similar to AMWA. In fact, AMSA and AMWA kind of do a lot of uh, events together. Um, they work to bring medical school guest speakers to campus. Uh, they help you build <clears throat> a competitive resume, and they provide opportunities in volunteering, tutoring, conferences, and medical mission trips. Okay, so again, you can get lots of experiences, hands-on activities that can make you very competitive for med school. So these are plans for this year that they actually accomplished. So they did uh, attend a national convention in Washington, D.C., and they plan to go back next year. Um, and this convention is awesome. You get to meet a lot of med schools, talk to them about how to be competitive for med school, what else you need to do. Uh, they do an elective abroad, oops, sorry about that. They do an elective abroad medical mission trip. Um, where they will go travel. In fact, we have a few students going to um, Asia this year to go do a medical mission trip, a uh, tour of the Andrews Institute, and AMSA outings and volunteering. Um, and they also have a lot of medical school seminars. They bring in a lot of speakers and so on. Uh, the first meeting dates are typically, again, they're going to try and pick a, an evening time. Um, I can't guarantee they'll be Wednesdays, um, but you can look on their Argo Pulse page for their dates. And I, I do want to add that you don't, you, some of the, you, if you're interested in the organization, but yet for some reason you can't attend their meetings, I would definitely contact the presidents and tell them that because you can still participate in the organization even if you can't make every single meeting. 
Okay, so be aware that even if you can't make a meeting, it doesn't mean you can't be part of the student org. A lot of these times it might not work for someone. So just keep that in mind. AMC has a lot of benefits. Um, so for pre-med students, you're going to have to take the MCAT. And there's lots of test prep materials that are quite expensive. And being a member of AM AMSA actually gets you a discount. So you get a free Kaplan MCAT Verbal Edge course, which is a $500 value. You get 10% discounts on all the programs. If you're an officer of AMSA, so any part of the uh, leadership committee, you get a 50% discount on Kaplan MCAT programs. That, that might save you $1,000, to be honest. These are expensive programs. So if you are interested, definitely become a leadership position for AMSA because it can save you money as well. And you also get uh, money off of some other summer programs from Kaplan. So there's lots of benefits to AMSA, not just for your resume and for your competitiveness to med school, but also financially. Okay, so if you're interested in uh, AMSA, here's the current cabinet, and this might be changing for fall. Um, the president is still Mo San Khan uh, at MK52, and definitely contact him. They're all really nice um, and passionate about helping everyone become competitive for med school. On the same line, uh, we have Alpha Epsilon Delta. This is AED, and this is a pre-health honor society. So this is not just for med students. This is for anyone who's inter interested in a health-related uh, career. So L AED is a National Health Pre-Professional Honor Society, and of course you can be really interested in anything and be a member of AED. Um, and again, they're committed to the advancement of education, service, and representation of the university. So many students who are in ADD are actually interested in medicine, dentistry, vet, pharmacy, nursing, PA, medical research, lots of things. So AED is a much larger organization, much more broad um, for anyone who's interested. In, and maybe you're not sure what, you're, what you really want to do. And so being part of AED will give you exposure to lots of those different types of careers. The president of AED is Sherry Sandry. Um, and some of these cabinet members are also changing because of graduation, so be aware that there might be openings for you um, if you're interested in becoming an officer in the future. Um, but definitely contact Sherry and find out when the meetings are going to be for fall. Um, they'll be part of Argapalooza, of course, and so you can always uh, join up with them. General meetings usually, so you can see this is from the fall semester, usually they're on a Thursday. I think they try to keep them on Thursdays as much as possible. Again, they're in the evenings. Um, although they will vary their dates, they always have free food. So many of these student organizations have tons of free food. Um, and they do have some requirements. Because they are, are an honor society, you have to have a certain GPA. And your members must attend at least seven events per semester. So you have to be active in the organization to continue to be a member. And they have a point system that will um, keep track of that. And in reality, you can't just join an organization and say you're part of AED and then put it on your resume. Um, because people are going to ask you, well, what did you do when you were in AED? And if you have nothing to say, then it was obvious that you didn't participate in that student organization. So they do things like have volunteer opportunities. They invite school speakers. Um, they do application strategies, so how to apply to med school. What are some of the tips, med school or other health schools? Where do you look? Where are the tips? What are you going to need in the future? Um, and then they do a lot of networking and leadership skills. So very similar to all the other organizations. And again, all the organizations provide these same opportunities. It's just important to find one that you're interested in and get involved and get going on these. Um, so here are some examples that they did. Uh, Relay for Life, uh, volunteering and cooking dinner at the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, they do Habitat for Humanity um, and uh, volunteer at the YMCA. So one thing you can realize, see here is that they're not all um, purely clinical type activities. And health professional schools don't necessarily care too much if they're clinical. They want to see that you're volunteering, that you're getting out there and doing things for other people. All right? And so that's what's important to them. It doesn't have to be clinical based. Here are some examples of school speakers they've had in the past. Um, University of South Alabama and FSU because they are the closest med schools. Um, they come a lot and give talks. But they've also had... Um, from other universities. Um, and usually these are the people coming to talk are people who are reviewing the students' applications as well. And so um, a lot of times you can, you can meet with them one-on-one -on -one and get lots of advice and network, which is really useful. And then they do also do um, MCAT seminars. They have MCAT study materials for those who are pre-med. Um, and you can rent them, and so you don't need to buy them. They're very expensive, and so if you can't afford to buy them, you can rent them from a, as an AED member and and then use them to study with. 
So there are uh, leadership positions that open up every year in AED. And so interviews are done at the end of each semester. So if you, let's say you started this fall, you could actually start running for a leadership position if you were interested. Um, and I highly recommend you do so because one, you have the opportunity to change the landscape of the student organization, maybe do some new activities that you have an idea of, but also again, it shows leadership um, skills and, and abilities. So go to the Argo Pulse. They are on Argo Pulse at UWF at AED. Um, you have to fill in an application. Their deadline for their spring semester was March 3rd. The deadline for the fall is going to be probably in September um, sometime or maybe October. And they have a $25 per semester due. And if you follow them on Argo Pulse or their Facebook page, you'll fi find all of their events. Um, they pretty much email all the members too. So if you sign up as a member, you're going to get lots of, of notifications about their events. Lastly, I do want to add that um, part of these pre-health student organizations, uh, the university, the biology department, also tries to help the, all the students. We have what's called a pre-professional health advising committee. And these are a group of faculty, and I'm one of them. And our job is to keep you up to date and track you during your uh, career here at, Bio, at UWF and make sure that you're doing the right things to be competitive for the schools that you're interested in. So. Uh, if you have not met with me or somebody else about this and you're a pre-professional uh, student, so you're pre-med, pre-dent, doesn't matter, pre-vet, pre-PA, uh, I would highly encourage you to just email me and all you do is you ask me for uh, a meeting. I want to have a pre-health meeting and I will meet with you and we'll just look over everything. When are you going to graduate? When should you be taking your entrance exams? How do you apply? Where do you go? If these are questions that you are not sure about, definitely contact us. Um, and we can help you. You're not on your own, and you shouldn't have to do this all by yourself. Okay, so here's a bunch of their contact information. So AED has lots of ways to get, get in touch with them. So again, um, go ahead and contact them if you need if you need more if you have more questions or you want to uh, get involved. All right, we have the Undergraduate Women in Science Student Organization. So this is called AWIS, and or it's called UIS, and UIS is a undergraduate part of a larger national organization called AWIS, so the American Women in Science um, organization. And so their goals is to act as a resource and provide support to further educate um, and, and build career experiences for women in STEM fields. So this is not just biology, this is across STEM disciplines. Um, and this is not just for women, this is for anyone who's involved in advocacy. They provide a lot of networking opportunities, professional development opportunities where they have seminars and workshops and they bring in speakers and, and they have lots of ways that you can network with people. Volunteer opportunities, leadership opportunities, so lots of executive board positions, of course, and like everyone else, of course, free food. They have lots of free food um, and lots of ability. So there's a contact information. They are on Facebook. They, they even are on Instagram at uwf underscore us. Um, and us at uwf.edu. This is a very active organization um, and it's not just health related. If anyone is interested in any form of science and wants to get involved, um, us is the place to be. Meetings, uh, this is for fall semester, but they try and keep them for Wednesdays. Um, and you'll see lots of ads, lots of signs all over the doors. And again, they have free food as well. You can kind of see that if you join like three to five student organizations, you might be able to eat for free, for have dinner for free for the entire week. So um, lots of food, and they do that because they want you to come out um, and and get and get fed at the same time. All right, we do have a pre-veterinary society um, of UWF, and so if you are interested in veterinary school or if you're just interested in like animals, um, this is a society that you might want to join. Um, their purpose is essentially to try and increase the number of UWF students accepted into vet school to promote a better knowledge and understanding of animals and to provide opportunities for hands-on experience with many different species. So they do a lot of volunteer experiences. So here's um, some things that they do. They attend the APVMA symposium. Uh, they bring in veterinary, a veterinarian lectures who either lectures or demonstrations. You can see here are some demonstrations and volunteer opportunities. Uh, they do an event called Paws and Pastries, which is a fundraising event. Um, and they also go to the Seacrest Wolf uh, Preserve. So lots of activities and events, and you can network with veterinarians, and a lot of times you can actually start getting involved in their clinics and, and volunteering in their clinics and getting some of that hands-on experience that vet schools are gonna really want you to have. 
they need you need to have a minimum GPA of a 2.5. Um, currently enrolled, you have to be a student, of course, um, an animal lover, uh, and they have dues, so $15 per semester or $25 per year. And again, if you're interested in the Pre-Vet Society, uh, the president is Cassandra Green, so KMG33, and you can contact her or find them on Argo Pulse and contact them for more information. And lastly, we have the UWF Pre-Pharmacy Society. And this society, I think, is on hold. I think they couldn't find a, a president, and I, I might be wrong on this, and, and I haven't heard much about the pre farm Society lately. So be aware, this is an opportunity for someone to come and start the society up again, and a whole, a whole new leadership um, opportunity for you. But if you are interested in pharmacy school and becoming a pharmacist or interested in pharmacy research or anything like that, we have a pre-pharmacy society. And again, there's it's like very similar to all the other societies. They just are a field or discipline specific student organization. So anyone who's interested in pharmacy school, this is your chance to get together with other people and find out how to be competitive for pharmacy school. So uh, same things, volunteer opportunities, trips to pharmacy schools, prepare for your interview, provide assistance for your application. Uh, they have, it's an honor society, so they have a 3.0 GPA. Um, and last I heard, the president was Dia Howard at DBH 13. Um, and I'm not sure if that's changed or not, but if you are interested, you can try and email her and just ask around about, hey, what's going on with the Pre-Pharmacy Society? I want to join it. And maybe they need someone to actually resurrect this society and start it up again. And you can try and find them on Argo Pulse. I think I did, and I couldn't find much about them. Okay, so that's it for this module. Um, hopefully, I know it's a lot of student organizations, but that's actually a nice thing about the biology department here. We have so much going on and so many ways to get involved. Um, so don't forget that your homework number two is the at UWF Opportunities Beyond My Courses that you need to download from uh, the content section of this module. And uh, after watching this presentation, you want to go and take the module two quiz. Um, and both the quiz and the homework are due this Sunday, uh, May 15th at 11.59 p.m., along with module one uh, stuff as well. Okay, so you have two modules per week um, that you can crank through uh, and get done. Uh, try and do this a little earlier so that way you're not pushing to the last minute in case you have technical difficulties because I cannot open the quizzes back up um, once they've shut down um, if you've done them at the last minute. All right, um, and then keep in mind that Module 3 and Module 4 will open on Monday, May 16th. So if you're doing this ahead of time and it's in the middle of the week, uh, you don't have anything to do until, um, after you've done the homework, of course, until Module, until Monday, all right? And then two more modules will open up that Monday and the same, same process. As always, if you have any questions or any concerns, please email me um, and, and we'll try and help you out. All right, so have a great week uh, and I'll see you in the next module.